Okay. All right. Well, it's good to have everybody here and it's good to be back in America. Of course, I've been back for a week since Tuesday, but it's still, it's taken me, it's taken me the whole week to just rest up. I didn't realize I was, I guess all the adrenaline left me ever, so evidently after I got home. So I'm feeling pretty good. I would like for everyone to pray for my niece, my brother's daughter, Bonnie. She's got pancreatic cancer and it looks like it's terminal. She's probably down in the very lower, you know, they normally last about six months and it's been since October. So it's been six months. We were going to leave and go down there in the morning to San Antonio, drive down there and see her and pray for her and uh, talk to her a little bit, but but she's still in the hospital tonight having a procedure. They're trying to get fluid off of her. So I don't know that she's going to feel like having any company tomorrow. So we may put it off to next weekend. Michael's uh, can't go next weekend and you can't go the next. Wow. Anyway, I so we're, gonna, we're just going to have to see. Everybody, if you would, maybe say a prayer for her and also for our us going if that you know we just have to see what happens all right anyway um first I, i'll ask if there's any bible questions i do have something i'll talk on if if not but if there is any bible questions i would consider it <clears throat> Just like I've always said, this is the smartest group there ever was. They, know, they don't have any questions. They, they, you know, they got it all figured out. Read that, or you might be like me. You don't, you, you got questions, you just don't know which ones to ask. <laughs> but I, uh, what I thought I would do tonight is maybe uh, explain the 24th chapter of Matthew. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 is where Jesus is talking about the end of the world. And um, we've all, we taught years ago in the body and many of the ministers still teach it this way that uh, most of this was, was fulfilled in the end of the Jewish world, but some of it is fulfilled down here. And, in the end of the Gentile world. Uh, and of course, when I came to the body, it's the message I heard was that it was uh, part of it fulfilled back there and part of it down here. But then later, I don't know, um, Brother Durham could tell you, it's probably been uh, probably 30 years ago that I changed on that. And I began to see that the whole thing was fulfilled in the end of the Jewish world. And um, so I did have a question on it, um, and on a couple parts of it, uh, Monday night with the uh, Spanish speaking group, we have Monday night Zoom meetings at, uh, at, at seven also. And, um, and we're fixing to start having um, Friday nights at seven o'clock Zoom meetings with, with the new pastors and ministers that we have that have come in. We've got, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, maybe a dozen people um, that want to, that are new, that I'm, I'm wanting to have some private, um, I mean, when I say private, they're, they're open, but, but uh, 
I'm wanting to start with those people that are new with foundation teaching, starting off with the history of, of Brother William Souders, the history of the body, um, understanding that, and then the falling away of the church, the scriptures that proves that, and then the need for restoration, um, the two worlds, the Jewish world and the Gentile world, a harvest of both worlds, Babylon, uh, you know, what Babylon is, how it's going to be judged, how. And once people, you know, if people don't see that the church fell away and it's going to need to be restored, they'll never understand the Bible and or get a vision of, of this message. Or, and um, then the... Um, then if they don't understand Babylon, and those are those are pretty easy to understand. They're eye-openers, but it lays a foundation that you can build on. Once they get that foundation, uh, it'll help them. If they've got eyes to see it all, they'll they'll see those those fundamental uh, teachings. And so that I'm starting with those new people in the Dominican Republic. We've got five new pastors and three in Santiago, one in Puerto Plata, one in Santo Domingo. Then we've got a pastor in Boca Chica and one in San Pedro de Marcolis, one in one in Iguay. Um, we've got a minister. He's not pastoring right now in Putacana. Um, It's five, six, seven, eight. Oh, and Nagua, Nagua, Pajita, two pastors in that area. So anyway, though so that's what we're kind of going to be working on starting tomorrow night. Anyway, some way I'm just wondering if there's some way to do that. You know, in America, that you can get enough people interested that you could start a Zoom meeting with them and fish them in through a Zoom meeting rather than trying to get them to church. You know how long it takes somebody to hear a message of foundation truths just by coming to regular service? They, it takes a long time for them to hear it that way. But also in America, it's very hard I would say not only in America, but probably this way in Canada too, but for sure it's this way in America. It's, it's hard to find somebody hungry enough to even want to hear just fundamental truths, you know, just something they've never heard before, but they don't have ears to hear it. You know, uh, yeah. it's hard to find somebody that wants that, that's even hungry for it. No wonder Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. There's not very many blessed people that are hungry. I mean, they'll get blessed if they're hungry, but there's not very hungry people. That's a better way to say it. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share tonight uh, with Matthew 24. And if you have questions, feel free to stop me. And... Um, I'll try to answer your questions. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And um, so can everybody see that okay? Okay. It says, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay, so Jesus, here he, he departs from the temple, and 
the disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus answered, he looks at them and says, you see all these things? Not one left here, not one be left here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. When he tells them that, they ask him these three questions. And they ask, here, here's the three questions in verse three. When shall these things be? And when shall be the sign of thy coming? And when shall be the end of the world? Uh, I've told everybody here at home, I have, you can probably see it right up here, Bible by Olive Tree. This is a free app. Um, you know, you can get it on, you can get it on, on, um, at your app store or the, whatever it's called on uh, Android. But anyway, where you get apps, it's called Olive Tree Bible. And, um, I, 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 I love this Bible app. Like right here, I added a note and it just says three questions by his disciples, Matthew 24, Jesus answers. So you can put a note anywhere you can highlight. Does it show this highlight? You all see my highlights? Yeah, okay. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to add another note, you could just, um, you could go here. Let's see, how do you do this? Maybe three, add another note. See, I had another note right there. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep that note. So if that's this one, no, it's this one. So I'm gonna, I'll delete it. Let's see, how did I do that? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, there it is right there. Hit that trash deal and delete it. So got rid of that. Let's make sure I didn't delete the wrong one. Okay, I did. Anyway, so you can make your notes. You don't have to make it at the front. You can make it anywhere. You know, like if I wanted to make a note right here, I could, uh, let's see. Let me... <laughs> Take me a minute, because it's different. It's a little bit different on my phone. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not figuring out how to do it on here. Anyway, you can make it anywhere. I'm not finding out how to do it right now, though. Uh -uh. I'll have to look that up and figure out how to make that note. But anyway, you, on my phone, it's real easy. You just touch any word. You make a note to any word. But it's not, it's not working here. There's something else you have to do. Anyway, let's get back to these three things. So Jesus, verse 4, answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Um, and let me, I might already explain that just a little bit, because, um, you know, in other words, there's, there were different ones back there telling that he, Jesus was not the Messiah, but there would be a Messiah come, and they would, you know, talk about a Messiah that would become, or how they saw the Messiah coming. Most of them thought that he was going to be building his own kingdom, you know, a natural kingdom there on earth. And, um, and I don't, we don't really have, I don't, I can't think of any scriptures where somebody was proclaiming to be Christ, but I, I know that there was different teachings of rejecting Jesus as the Messiah and looking for a different Messiah. Uh, verse six says, you'll hear, of wars, rumors of wars, say that you be not troubles, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. There was those things you can find there, pestilences. There was earthquakes. Even in the seven churches of Asia, there were, before the church fell away, there was earthquakes in some of those seven churches. Um, one of those churches never did rebuild or recover. Uh, which was that 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 earthquake was after AD 70 uh, or yeah it was after AD 70 but it did destroy one of the churches which I think was Laodicea I have to go back and double check it all these things are the beginning of sorrows they shall then shall they deliver, deliver up deliver you up to be afflicted shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. You remember John saying that in, um, um, let's see if we can, we may be able to do this. Um, well, in in John, the epistle of John, here in the, I believe the fourth chapter in the first verse. See where he said, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Uh, he says, hereby know ye that the spirit, know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses, confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, wherefore you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. That word Antichrist just simply means that they're against Christ being the Messiah. They did not believe that Jesus was come in the flesh as the Messiah, and as they did not believe that he was of God, that they just believed he was a man. So that's what he was prophesying here, um, that many false prophets arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. See, right there, if you just read that like it is, you believe that this gospel is going to be preached in all the world. Well, you have to understand that what he's talking about right there, he's talking about it being preached in all the Jewish world. And then really, you need to discern the fact that it wasn't preached in every city. There were cities that... that they shook the dust off their feet because nobody there would wanted to hear it. Uh, but And it was preached into all the world that would receive it. And that, in other words, uh, there was probably areas they never even went into, but God didn't send them into that area. But they were in all the world. Now, let's go to some scriptures here to show that. Matthew 28, 19 uh, it shows that uh, Jesus told his disciples to go into all the world and preach. Here it is right here. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I come with you always, even to the end of the world. And that's talking about the end of the Jewish world. Uh, let's go down here a little bit, get some more scriptures. Uh, 
I'll, I'll, I'll look, look at Matthew 98. I'm sorry, Psalms 98. It says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things, and his right hand and his holy arm, his right hand's his ministry, and the holy arm is Jesus, hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Now, when you read that, you, you know, you could say, well, that may be talking about the whole end of the world. Well, not when you couple it with these other verses that we're going to look at. Matthew 24, 14, he, we just, uh, we just read that they're to preach the, this uh, for a witness to all nations. The kingdom shall be preached in all, the gospel of the kingdom be preached in all the wor world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This is talking about the end coming, which therefore you'll see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel. In other words, and that's talking about AD 70. But let's go a little bit further so that it's a little bit more clear that the gospel was preached to that whole known world. Romans 10, 18. Let's look at what Paul said here. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the end of the world. See, if you back up here a little bit, how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who's believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But I say, that's Paul, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. That was the end of the Gentile world. What did Jesus say in John 4? He said, I came to do the will of my father for he has sent me to finish his work in the end of the Gentile world. He was to finish the work among the, Gen among the Jewish people. Uh, it's just dealing with that world back there. Um, so let me show you some more. Um, well, I've got Revelation 14, 15, which refers to the end of the Gentile world where there was to be a harvest there. But let's go to Colossians 1.5, Paul speaking to the to Colossians. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, and doth also in you since the day you heard of it, knew the grace of God and truth. So here he's saying that this gospel had come in all the world. It came unto you as it did in all the world back there. It certainly ain't talking about the future. He's talking about what has happened. And then in the 23rd verse, he says, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled to be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So I'm just giving you scriptures to show that they did preach the gospel back there to everyone in that world that God sent them to preach it to that would hear it. And so that's what he's saying here. I, I didn't show that, but... In Matthew, I mean, in Psalms 19, and it's really uh, first being fulfilled in, in um, uh, Matthew 19, in the end of the Jewish world, but it's going to be fulfilled down here too. 
Psalms 19, 1 through 6 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. It, you know, it's drawn you a picture of the natural heavens and the natural uh, earth. But it's really, uh, it's really talking about the church, the heavens here on earth that God establishes uh, their voice where there, uh, how does it say that? There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. That's Jesus, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there's nothing hid from the heat thereof. One of the reasons that's a little bit hard for us to understand is we we haven't seen the eternal judgment, the heat. And it certainly looks like it is coming. It looks like judgment's on its way in a greater way than it's been before. But anyway, the gospel, let me read verse 14 again. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto nations, and then shall the end come. We had a meeting a few years ago where a man got up uh, at the campground and taught that we're nowhere near close to the end of the Gentile world because this gospel has got to be preached to the whole world. <laughs> and he talked on that for a while, and I got up and asked him, I got up and read these scriptures. And I said, I'd like for you to see that what you're talking about in these last days and end of the world and the gospel preached to all the world Let's look at these scriptures. These scriptures you're using are just talking about the end of the Jewish work. It'll have to be done down here, but not to the whole world. If we're going to save everybody out of the whole world, it can be saved. And who's going to be saved through the thousand years? There's going to, there's going to be nations that's never heard the name of Jesus after the bride's made up. That'll have to be dealt with after the thousand years. But the Gentile world that God sent us to, that group of people, that uh, segment of people is what this is talking about. Verse 15, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place, who readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in G Judea flee unto the mountains. Let him which is in the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe to them that are child to give uh, to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter. neither on the Sabbath day, because when, when Rome invaded and destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, uh, there wasn't any time to be able to take time to pack up any of your stuff. Uh, he was just saying, you, you've got to head for the hills because destruction is going to come. And then those that are, have little babies, you know, it's going to be hard for you to, to flee with babies, trying to carry babies and take them with you. And then pray that it, this don't happen in the wintertime because you're going to be going up into the mountains where it's colder, freezing cold. You're not going to have any protection from the cold. And pray that it's not on the Sabbath day because the law tells y'all on the Sabbath day that you can't go, but so far. On, on, in, on a day, in a day, you can only travel so many feet. And so he was saying, don't be sure to pray. It just don't happen at, th at that time. 
It'd be a lot better if it happened in the summertime than it would in the wintertime. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor shall ever be. No, nor shall ever be to the Jewish world. But there will be a time, I think, you know, I've been, you know, at this time right now with Russia and Ukraine, of course, they're talking about nuclear war that they've never talked about. And uh, so, you know, um, it, 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 I mean, I do not think that we're going to have a nuclear war because nuclear war, you're talking about massive, major destruction of America and Russia and probably the NATO nations. I mean, the, they're, you know, we've got nuclear warheads in Missouri and in Louisiana. So right here in Arkansas, I don't know what y'all are going to do. I'm, go I'm going to the Dominican Republic here before long. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. But, you know, uh, nuclear fallout, well, it, even if it doesn't, it doesn't destroy in that area, nuclear fallout will kill millions of people. That's probably what we're headed into as far as Armageddon's concerned. We're probably headed into a nuclear war. I don't know exactly how that's going to come about as far as what Armageddon's going to be, but it's going to be devastating. And, you know, what we read in scriptures about that, it looks like that nuclear war would certainly fit that picture. Um, but I, I don't, I think every, all of the leaders of all the countries understands that if they if they deploy a nuclear weapon, they're going to destroy themselves because it, the only way to answer it is it is with nuclear a nuclear weapon answer, and then you're talking about destroying the whole world, you know. So I, I don't think it's time for that right now. There's too many scriptures that has to be fulfilled. So, you know, I am looking at the United States as, um, you know, it is, it has been a superpower for a long time, but it's even becoming more of a superpower as far as leading NATO, Europe, the, you know, all of the nations in the world is uh, Russia is down to having only China and Iran and a few, uh, there's not very many people that stand with Russia. In fact, even China is having to back up from supporting them because they realize it's gonna turn the whole world against them if they do. That's been part of their answer to them. So uh, there's no question in my mind that, that what is taking place right now is setting a, uh, it's laying a foundation for, you know, where this world is heading as far as heading into judgment. Just going to be interesting, you know, to see what actually is going to happen with Russia when this Ukraine deal is, is over. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see what all of the other nations, how they respond to it in the end. Anyway, um, so here, take no clothes, Sabbath day. Okay, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Well, Nero was the Caesar of Rome at that time. He was a very cruel man, and he tried every way to stamp out Christianity. He tried to destroy it. He, he was a severe persecutor of Christianity. And if God hadn't stopped him, if God hadn't halted him, he would, he would have probably, not only him, but then the two Caesars after him, Domitian was the, 
not the Caesar after him, but the next one. And he was just as cruel as Nero was. And a great persecutor of the church. Uh, but if God hadn't held those men back, they, <clears throat> they, would have, they would have destroyed the church. There wouldn't even been a fallen away church. There wouldn't have been a Gentile group. God, they would have all been destroyed. So <clears throat> the very elect uh, would, have, would have probably been deceived because they'd have gotten down to feel like God's not with us. God's not going to help us. He's judged, he's judged the whole world. We're not, none of us are, are favored of God enough to, for him to protect the church. But in anyway, verse 24, he says, Behold, I've told you. No, verse 23. Then if any man shall say, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in a desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in secret chambers, believe it not, for the lightning. Now here he starts answering the coming of the Lord. When is your coming going to take place? He's telling them how the destruction's going to be. But now he's starting to tell them, here's how the coming's going to be. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall all the, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For whosoever, wheresoever the carcass is, there will be the eagles gathered together. The carcass there is the body of Christ, and the eagles are the ministers of the body of Christ. Wherever the body is, the carcass, it's it there, it's a dead body. It's died out to the world, but it's alive unto God, and the eagles feed on the things. You know, it's just talking about a spiritual death uh, that takes place there. Then he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. Well, that's talking about the falling away of the church. But before that, he's talking about the, the coming, the lightning. His coming is like the lightning coming out of the east. That word lightning there. It just means a bright shining. It really means revelation. The gleam, the gleam of a lamp, the lightning. It's not talking about lightning that like bolts in heaven when there's a storm. It doesn't come, it doesn't, there's not a bolt of lightning that is from the east to the west. It bolts from up down to the earth. But this lightning is talking about the sun, how it comes up in the east and it shines unto the west. That's called the day of the Lord. It comes up, and it, but it does go down. There, the, the coming of the Lord starts out just like the sun, and it sets, and it goes back to darkness. And that's the way the coming of the Son of Man will be. And immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, See, it's going to go down, and the moon shall not give her light. It'll be a moon. It won't be a moonlit night. It'll be a dark. You've been out. Have you ever been out before? There wasn't even many stars. Just a black night. You know, it just wasn't uh, part of the the loon the the lunar uh, the time of times of I don't know how you call that the lunar. Uh, Op operation of the of the stars and the moon and when that when there's a reflection now none of them are lights the the sun is is shining on them but in their orbit they get in places where the sun doesn't even shine on them at least in whatever part of your world is that you live in where it doesn't shine on them. um and so the church that's a picture of the church falling away the stars, they'll fall from heaven. There won't be any lights, won't be any ministers. The powers of heaven will be shaken. And there appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they'll see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 
See, he's making different statements here, but it's it has to do with the day of the Lord. Um, and that's one of the things kind of have to understand is the way the Bible's written. There's so much information that it'll show one part and then it'll show another part that's basically talking about the same time frame, but part of it here is like in the 29th verse is talking about the church falling away. But then in the 30th verse, it's talking about the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven. It just, I could show you different scriptures. Uh, you know, I had a, a question on that. I mentioned Monday night about in uh, the 20th chapter of the book of Revelations concerning the, what would happen, let's see, how does that scripture say that? Talking about the uh, beloved city. If that was talking about the same, uh, you know, that's mentioned here in, in the book, in, in the 24th chapter, uh, being one in, the Gentile world, one in the Jewish world. Uh, you basically won't know what the beloved city was. I can say something about that later. But, but my point is, is that if you look at, um, I hope I'm not being too scattered here, but if you look at the 20th chapter of the book of Revelations, Let me, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Okay, right here. If you remember in the beginning here of the book of Revelations, um, it, it says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. There's all four phases, are titles of different phases of evil. And it's only in this verse and in the 12th chapter of the book of Revelations, it's only, only scriptures you're going to find that one scripture has all four titles in. And bound him a thousand years and cast him into a bottomless pit and shut him up. Now we know the bottomless pit is false religion. It's a false religious system. It has no foundation to it. And shut him up and set a seal on him that he should deceive the, the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. The way that's going to take place is, is that uh, righteousness is going to prevail down through the thousand years in such a way. Isaiah said that he that died at a hundred years old would be accursed. Uh, you'd just be a young whippersnapper, so to speak, down through the thousand years. If you died at a hundred years old, you'd die like a baby, just, a, you know, very young. Um, Righteousness is going to prevail during that time for such a for such a length of time that there's that wickedness is just not going to be able to operate except you know it just have to happen in dark places you know in other words like right now right now wickedness prevailing anywhere you go turn on your TV you're going to see homosexuality in the ads, just in the ads, not, not necessarily, you know, I mean, for sure, they're going to be on programs, but it's everywhere, not just homosexuality, all kinds of filth, all kinds of corruption, all kinds of uh, sin that is taking place. Wickedness is looked at, you know, like there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the just the flesh, the lust of the flesh, it's just prevailed, it's prevalent. Righteousness is bound right now. Righteousness is bound. How many of y'all feel like talking about Jesus and the Word of God on your daily task? You know it's not going to be accepted. You know that you're going to be talking, you know, 
with a lot of scrutiny, a lot of ears of scrutiny that's going to hear your words. Not that you wouldn't say or testify of God, but you got to be a little bit wise about when you do it because you're, you know, the Bible says, correct a fool and he'll hate you. Correct a wise man and he'll get wiser, you know. It, so right now, we, righteousness is bound, but wickedness is prevailing. It'll be the opposite of that during the thousand years with Christ and the bride and the, the ministry of the Jewish, uh, the Jews that will come back in that will prevail in a second heaven condition. The church will not fall away again. And if somebody want, got a question on that, I'd be glad to answer it. But so here, Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Well, I mean, some people just think that, you know, God's going to shut up evil. But some people who believe in a personal devil think that somehow God's just going to bind him where he can't work. But we know that evil works in the minds of men. and. And it, it's, it's prevalent through man's mindset, through man's behavior. And it's going to take a, an authority of God to be able to bind men. You know, I, I'm fortunate enough that I can remember when I was a little boy that it was more of a time of revival after World War II uh, and after uh the um uh, what did they call it when it, everybody was so poor somebody give me the word what what was it can't hear you brother fisher great uh, depression yeah the great depression excuse me i just can't my mind don't work as fast as it used to so the depression <clears throat> that great depression you know that caused people to to, to serve, you know, reach out to God for help because of all the poverty and everything that was taking place. I was young and I mean, I was, I'm fortunate that I lived at a time and lived in a area where I experienced that and I saw righteousness prevail. You know, women were you know, women were treated as women. They weren't treated, you know, uh, you know, you men were careful about what they said around women. Uh, you know, you never saw women smoking cigarettes back then. Remember they, the saying, how many of y'all remember the saying that came about, you come a long way, baby. That was in ads of women smoking cigarettes. You know, the, one of them was called, one of some kind of slim, Virginia Slims, I think it was. Women, you know, they made them kind of a feminine cigarette. <laughs> now they smoke cigars. I see them. <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, so Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years, but then he's going to be loosed a little season. Well, okay, let's go down here then to um, right here after the bride is made up in the before the thousand years that's going to they're going to reign in with him second death's not going to have any power over the bride in verse six and when the thousand years are expired verse seven satan shall be loosed out of his prison well the way satan will be loosened out of his prison is when there's a resurrection of the unjust when the unjust resurrect they'll all resurrect they're, number one, remember this, they're unjust. The sea gives up the dead that's in it. That's God's people out in the world that are backslid. But they're still going to resurrect in the in, in under condemnation. That's one of the things you need to realize when Jesus said, marvel not at this for the day uh, cometh when all that are in the graves, all of God's children are going to resurrect. All of the unjust are going to come forth. God's not, Brother Leniger, 
if you ever listen to him very much, he used this term in his last couple of years over and over and over. He said, God is not going to judge anybody except they stand before a Supreme Court. He used that, that term, Supreme Court just, Justice. His point was is that they've got to go through eternal judgment that was never set up until in the end of the Jewish world, again in the end of the Gentile world. And if they if if they didn't live during those times and they're unjust, they're going to come up after the thousand years, but they never saw a Supreme Court operation. What he was saying was is a a divine order of God that ministered uh, eternal judgment, that you'd have to see that and hear it before God would count you unworthy of life. And so the unjust will come up, those that are in the graves and those that are in death and hell. Uh, of course, death and hell was you know, the, the pale horse, the rider was death and hell followed after it. So if, if you're in a religious hell uh, uh, that, that can't save you, um, and, and if you're in the pit or Tataru, a religious condition, or uh, that death is, is overshadowing you, you God's going to get his children out of all of that the world religious system and uh, those that are that death, death's got them in these different places, but he's still going to resurrect his children that are unjust and give them an opportunity to hear the truth of the gospel. So when that's how Satan is going to be loosed for a little season, that's going to be resurrecting these people who have not came through the thousand years are been bound by the righteousness that prevailed. And so for a, a little season, wickedness is going to be loosed. Okay. And then here in the seventh verse, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison. Okay. Now look at these two things and shall go out to deceive the nations, which are the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, together with them to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. That's a pretty great number, isn't it? And when, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, uh, saints about, and the beloved city, New Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Okay, now if you read this just the way it's printed here, you would say this happens before the, the resurrection. Well, it, it does not. It, it doesn't happen because if righteousness is bound for the thousand years, and, and then it's telling this is then when the, when the thousand years are expired, Satan's going to be loosed out of a prison, and here's what's going to happen. This picture of what, that's a symbolic of what Ezekiel prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39 about Gog and Magog. Gog was the prince of the land of Magog. Okay? It's not, it's not two different things. I mean, it is two different things. It's not two different countries, but it's talking about the prince of Magog, who was Gog. And they, they in Ezekiel's prophecy, they were the people that were against the people of God. Well, and they were described back then as the those that were in Northern Asia and could go up on north of that. You know, if you go on up north of that, you would get into Ukraine and Russia, but they aren't the people in Ezekiel's prophecy that was against God's people. It was, they were called ancient Tartary, which was all the people up in Asia, Eastern, Western, and Central Asia that was north of, of Jerusalem 
that were always warring and fighting against God's people. Well, this is a this is symbolic of that prophecy that there's going to be people that are going to try to overthrow the people of God after the thousand years. Well, it shows this first that they're going to go out and encompass the saints about the beloved and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. There is no war. <clears throat> they're not going to be able to come against God people. He's just going to destroy them. Okay. And, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever here. Okay, Revelation 16, 13, here Satan, the devil, is finally eternally destroyed. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Uh, the works of the flesh are eradicated from among man, then the beast and false prophet, nor then the beast, false prophet, nor Satan shall be any more. In Revelation 19, 20, the beast and false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. Let me show you. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, which we know that is second death. Okay, so, so look at what happened here. After God judged Babylon, he destroys the beast and the false prophet. That's the beast system in the end of the Gentile world and the false prophet, which is the Rome, uh, Pope of Rome. He destroys them after destroying uh, in the destruction of Babylon. That is in the end of the Gentile world. And the last, the last, vial is Armageddon. That destroys the beast system of the Gentile world and the false prophet, but it does not destroy the devil, Satan, the dragon, or the serpent. Why? Because God cannot destroy evil because you've got to deal with evil all the way down through a thousand years, but there's not a beast system or a dragon system ruling the world anymore. So God has to destroy that. And and but he can't destroy evil that's in men. That's got to, it'll take a thousand years to do that. And even after that, it he's gonna have a resurrection of the unjust and he's got to deal with them. They're gonna be unjust and un, they're condemned of sin. And they'll have to meet judgment. And many of them will reject that. Now, my point here is, is that here he speaks of these going out encompassing the people of God, the camp of the saints. That's just symbolic. There's no way they could encompass the whole population of the thousand-year world. But it's just talking about they rose up to destroy God's, they're going to rise up to destroy God's people. God, and that's going to take place. After this, now here's my point. It tells that, then it tells you about the resurrection. It's talking about the same, during the same time period, these two things are going to take place. He just reveals one thing, then he, re, then he adds more details to what's going to take place during that time frame. So, and that, that's what I was saying, uh, going back to Matthew 24, some of these things, are mentioned and then, but you, to add more detail of what's going to happen during this time frame, the more detail is given. It's not always given the way that you would lay it out, maybe today, but in their day, it was the way that they they said things, the way that they wrote things, and so uh, this resurrection, that's what's going to loose Satan for a little season is resurrecting all these unjust people that were not, they didn't operate 
it didn't take them a thousand years to, to finally gather together to rise against God's people. They were bound. They were not able to operate, and it took this resurrection um, for, for them to work. And so, uh, so uh, Satan, let's see. And so here in verse 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are and shall be torn. So God's going to destroy evil. That's the end. When God destroys all these people, there won't be any more wickedness in the world. But these people, then he goes in to show how this happens with this resurrection of the unjust. Um, see, here in verse 30, see, gave up the dead that were in death and hell, deliver up the dead that were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is second death. And whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. So that ends evil. There is no more evil. The devil, ser ser uh, I'm sorry, the serpent, Satan, the devil, and the dragon. There is no more. It's He's destroyed, but he can't be destroyed until all evil is judged and destroyed out of the earth. So let me... Let me go back here now to Revelation 24. I'm sorry, I'm, I started late, so I'm, I'm not really over time very much here. <laughs> uh, let's see, where were we? Okay, so uh, the Son of Man coming in clouds, those clouds, that is a witness of those that are in a second heaven condition with power and great glory that Jesus, he's coming in a church that is a heavenly witness. It's in a second heaven condition with power and great glory, and he'll send his angels or his ministry with a great sound of a trumpet. That's the seventh trumpet, the last trumpet. And they'll gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Again, the gospel is going to be preached to the whole world in the end of the Gentile period during the harvest. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, he put it forth leaves, yet uh, you know that summer's nigh. So likewise, when you see these things, know that all that it is near, even at the doors. In other words, he said, just like y'all can tell in the summertime, when a branch is tender, it puts forth its leaves, you know that summer's not. Right now, if you look outside here in Arkansas, the, the trees are, are, you can see the little green leaves that are fixing to pop out on all the trees. We're fixing to have leaves and summer's near. We're close to summer. So likewise, so you, you know when you see, he's saying, y'all can tell when it's gonna be summer, I'm telling you all these things, when you see these things begin to, to uh, uh, when you see all these things I'm telling you, know that the end is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation, look, this generation that he's talking to right there shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, now what he said right there, no man will know it. He, they didn't at the time that he said that, but there were greater things revealed. Paul, he said in the first, first Corinthians 7, he said, the time is short. They, and if you wanted to use these words that knowing the very single day of the week or the hour of the day, but I think he's talking about the day of the Lord and the hour, the their hour, their last prophetical hour, that God was eternal judgment was meeting them. Right then, no man knew that. Jesus didn't even know exactly when that was going to come to pass, evidently. 
But he said, as in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So uh, it, it'll be that way down here too. It was that way back there. They didn't think Jesus was the Messiah. They didn't think the body of Christ was the true church. And they went right on doing what they'd always done. And, and just like Noah's Ark, the door shut on it. God shut it on the end of that world too, because they rejected the very son of God. And now, and, and no, not until they knew not until the flood came, took them all away. So shall the coming of the son of man be. Then shall be two in the field. One will be taken. The other will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. The one will be taken, the other will be left. In other words, God is going to take those unrighteous people in judgment out of the way, and what will be left will be the people of God. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known and would, and what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered the house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Brother Leninger used to say that all the time. I know when Jesus is coming, he'd get a crowd all hushed and real quiet, and then he'd say, he's coming in the hour that you think not. Who, saw, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom the Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom the Lord will, when he cometh, find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over his goods. Uh, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants to eat, drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in the hour that he is not of, and shall cut him asunder and point him his portion for the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of tree. So uh, I just thought I'd go over the 24th chapter there. Uh, it's, you know, it's been a long time since I've heard anybody go over it. I mentioned it uh, in one of our Bible studies not too long ago. I'm not sure that I actually went through the whole thing and really explained it, but even if I did, it don't hurt to hear it again because you may not get it all in one setting. Anyway, uh, I don't know if there's any questions. If there is, feel free to ask them um, on any part of what I said. But anyway, I do have it taped. Uh, if there's not any questions, we might mention that our, you know, our prayer request and pray together before we close tonight. Again, remember my niece that's got pancreatic cancer. That's if God don't touch her, she's she's already in the latter stages of of losing her battle and. And uh, she really needs, you know, my hope is, is that she really hasn't lived a Christian life. My hope is, is that she can at least become just in a good repentance. I don't know if she's got the Holy Ghost or not, but I know she believes in the Lord for sure. Um, anyway, um, please pray for her. Brother Bill Daniels is... I heard from him this week. It, um, he's home. He's doing some better, but uh, he really needs our prayers. He's really, you know, he's he's really, you know, he really does need our prayers. His health is just not good. Sister Julie uh, Crafton, she really needs our prayers. She's taking on a lot of water. Um, I mean, a lot of water. Her, her, her legs and, and are swollen up, you know, twice the size of they are to be. And uh, she's, she's afraid of going to the hospital. She's, she's afraid of COVID. She don't want to go to the hospital, but 
she's not going to be able, you know, we really need to pray for her. I really love Sister uh, Crafton. She's a precious saint in our church, and she really needs, she really needs our prayer. I can, I don't know if she's on here right now, but if I can talk her into going to the hospital, I'm going to. She needs to get that water off of her. Um, Sister Crow, uh, let me mention here as a as a um, announcement, we were going to go as a group, not this Sunday, but next Sunday at three thirty after church, and and you know have just visit Sister Crow, pray for her, maybe sing some songs with her, have a little maybe a little mini service there with her. She won't be able to take probably any more than an hour. Um, you know, she's 97 years old and she's just not doing that well. But we want to we want to do that. We thought not this Sunday, but the following Sunday was the best. But we've talked to her daughter since Sister Tally has, and they're asking us to come this Sunday instead of the next Sunday. So those of you that can go this Sunday, that's when we're going to go. We need a group to go and see Sister Crow. And so at 3.30, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow's the first, Brother Fisher. It's your month. So I don't know if I'll be at church this weekend. If my niece can have us, we're going to leave in the morning early drive to San Antonio, which is about 12 hours. We'll be there Saturday with her, and then we'll come back on Sunday. So we won't be back in time for service. So y'all need to get that set up uh, to go Sister Crow, see Sister Crow. Of course, if my niece is not going to be able to take us this weekend, I'll be here, and I'll let you know the answer to that. I'll post this recording on the uh the WhatsApp group uh, uh, site uh, whenever I get the recording back, uh, the link to it. What else do we need to pray for? Um, Brother Smith? Yes, Brother Mr. Goss. The yeah, since you're, since he was head. in the hospital there and they got him cleared up and everything with the UTI and he was, he's been home, what, Angela, is it a week and a half or? something like that. And uh, she just got word Sunday, he's got another one. And so they got him on antibiotics again. Wow. And with all the, I think the problems with all the antibiotics, which I'm sure Angela, she's a nurse, she wouldn't know. I guess that he could get, uh, um, what do you call it? They would stop working on him if he keeps taking them. Um. Okay, let's pray for that. And then remember, of course, remember the Keswick Church. And then I have surgery the 13th of April. And uh, I'm hoping if I recover from it in time, if Brother Goss is where I can, I'm going to try to go see him. I want to go see Brother Goss. I want to do that. Canada's been closed, but I think it's open now, isn't it? And so, but I, yes. I don't think I can go before I have my surgery, but but I should be able to go within a couple of weeks after that. So as of tomorrow, that. there's as of tomorrow, there's no tests required. All right, good. All right. Um, what else? Any more requests? Sister Durham's mother, Sister Leslie Hayes, she's I think 93 and she's not doing well at all. She's, <clears throat> you know, she's, she's in a nursing home and they don't expect her to live too long. So pray for her and for sister Durham and her family. They, she's a, she's been a, she's a good woman. And uh, I think she's worthy of our prayers. So pray for that family. What else? And I wanted to, Oh, sorry. Um, yes. I wanted to give praise report over Mallory's appointments this week. Um, her hearing test, she passed. Um, we did not pass the development, uh, the de developmental test, but we're okay with that. We're, that is to be expected. So maybe at 18 months, she'll pass the six-month test, and that's all right. Um, 
but we did also pass our vision test. And instead of the 15 degree crossing that she had, it is not even half of that anymore. So we still do have to patch, but no glasses, no surgery. So that is peace of mind. Um, so that was good news. And then um, if y'all will remember our neighbors, we have two really awesome neighbors on both sides of us that have helped us tremendously this year. Um, and don't know that I can. One lost their husband just uh, on the 16th and then um, yeah. the other side of us lost their mother. So just uh, the got spawners and the farmers. All right, let's remember them in prayer. All right, if there's not any other requests, well, let's all turn our microphones on and pray together. Thank the Lord for his goodness to us. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Thank 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 you, Lord. Oh, praise God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Touch my sister. Oh, God. Touch all these requests, Lord. You are able, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.